Guys, before we get into the episode, I want to thank the following sponsors. I want to thank Go Hunt Gear Shop. Cody Nelson, my friend of 20-plus years, is the optics manager there. If you have any optical needs at all, binoculars, spotting scopes, tripods, anything to do with glassing, give Cody a call at 702-847-8747. That's extension 2. You can also send him an email directly at optics at gohunt.com. I want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. That's K-U-I-U dot com. It's the best place to find out more information about Kuyu. Kuyu makes the best ultralight hunting gear on the market today. Uh, if you see any of the photos on my Instagram account, uh, you can see that I'm wearing Kuyu and have been since uh, the beginning. I want to thank them for their sponsorship. I also want to thank PhoneScope. PhoneScope, if you use the JSCOT19 promo code, you're going to get a 10% discount. That's the digiscoping adapter that I use to take photos and videos on my Instagram account. It's an awesome uh, way to uh, take you know, videos and pictures of animals in the field that you're hunting. Uh, go to the phonescope.com, use the JSCOT19 promo code. I also want to thank onxmaps.com. Onxmaps.com is uh, basically replaced the handheld GPS that I used to carry around. The app is incredible. If you use the JSCOT19 promo code, they're going to, at, at, when you check out, they're going to send you an email and you just enter JSCOT19 and you're going to save 20%. Uh, some of the things that I like about the Onyx app, uh, I love the private public land overlay. You can see exactly where you stand, you know, where the private boundary is. Uh, I love the uh, satellite image. I love the, uh, the hybrid image and also the topo image that you can easily just toggle back and forth, just look at the topo, then toggle straight to the aerial just by the touch of a button. I also really like the breadcrumb tracking feature. It shows exactly where you are at all times. You can uh, track yourself in, track yourself out. Uh, it, makes it, it makes it really cool. So I want to thank Onyx Maps. Go to uh, onyxmaps.com. Use the JSCOT19 promo code, and you're going to save 20%. Guys, let's get right to this episode. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. It is September 8th, and I've got Tom McReynolds of Black Mountain Outfitters from New Mexico on the phone. Tom, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. I wanted to get a kind of a report from you uh, going into, you've got an archery elk season going right now, but just for those hunters out there that are looking at hunting New Mexico, uh, what's going on? What are you seeing out there, Tom? Well, it was really hot i mean probably the i mean the warmest weather we've ever seen for the first week of archery season um it was hot dry i mean it was pretty tough conditions the animals were very nocturnal um things started to pick up the past couple of days um we actually had a pretty big storm just come through it's cooled down 10 to 15 degrees and we've gotten some moisture out of it so it, this will change things just because it's cooled down enough where you know the rut should kind of start to kick on um you know it was a, it was a tough first week we did we did really well considering but it's probably the warmest first week we've ever seen yeah i'm over here in colorado at the ot six ranch and virtually in august uh over here we haven't gotten any rain at all we did just get that same uh storm that probably blew through uh you guys and it came up here to us um and it seemed like you know, the bulls started, you know, just starting to bugle a little bit and acting a little uh, more like they should be. It seemed like that first week over here, just almost summer pattern, just very dry. Um, you know, they were keyed in on water. Were your elk keyed on, in on water over there? Yeah, they were, and we had, we had some pretty decent success on water. Um, you know, it, the problem was, you know, we, a lot of our elk were hitting at night. Um, we had cameras so we could see when they were hitting. But, um, you know, I mean, you know, it's it, it can be tough when it's hot like that. Um, but now now with this cool weather, they're definitely you – know, we got a little bit of rain, not a, not a lot, not enough to to really make it really, you know, muddy or fill tanks or anything. But we got enough to, to get the ground wet and, you know, make it cool it down a lot. That's the biggest thing. It was just so hot. That it was yeah. just it was, it was tough. The last time we talked, Tom, um, you had said that you thought that the antler growth was going to be fantastic. Uh, what have you seen so far? Um, it, is it as good as you thought it was going to be? Where does it rank? Where does it fall uh, in in 
you know, what you've seen over there? Uh, it's very good from what we've seen. We've seen some really big bulls. And honestly, you in the next week, we'll start to really see some big bulls pop out because the bulls are definitely starting to gather cows now, and they're starting to kind of get with it. Um, the bulls we've seen, we've seen some great bulls. I mean, even younger bulls are, are good. Um, on a year like this, there's no telling what's going to pop out. I mean, it's it's um, the sky's kind of the limit, you know. Um, definitely good horn growth. No no issues there this year. And we'll just have to see. Typically when it's dry and hot like this, what, what concerns me the most right now about the next couple of weeks is that when it's hot and dry and has, we haven't really had a monsoon up until this point, it, I have a feeling monsoon season is about to start. Because um, in in, the, in history we've seen mid to late September be really wet on on years like this, so it can make it difficult to get around and to hunt. You know. Yeah, you know it's one of those things that uh, you know we were hoping we had such great winter moisture across the Southwest. You know, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Nevada had had good moisture, um, and I was just hoping that we would pile on a fantastic monsoon. And, you know, Arizona, Colorado, I can speak for them, had a very, very lethargic, not good monsoon. It sounds like New Mexico was no different. Yeah, it, it wasn't. I mean, it was virtually non-existent here. I mean, it, and then actually yesterday, and it tried for the a couple of days before that, it kind of tried to storm, but it just didn't make it. And then finally yesterday it came in and it sat, you know, it, it came in and sat, sat in and rained. I mean, it, last night, all night, it drizzled. So that's those are good good rains that hopefully we'll get some feed out of this. I mean, we have another couple of weeks of, you know, growing potential. But what people don't understand is when we get moisture this late, it's, it's hard for the feed to grow. Really, that rain needs to come in August at our elevation. So um, hopefully we get a little more feed growth out of this. I mean, prior to that, I mean, there was areas that had really good feed. It was real spotty. So hopefully this will kind of balance that out a little bit, you know, get get some areas that have been drier, we'll get them uh, greened up a little bit and let these elk spread out. Right now our, our elk are pretty concentrated in those areas that have the best feed, which, you know, it makes it real, makes the herds of elk real pockety. But, I mean, guys that's been seeing good numbers, they're just real concentrated, which can be good and it can be bad. Um, but with this rain, a little bit of storm activity, it'll start to scatter those elk a little bit and make it a little more, uh, you know, a little little easier to hunt, a little nicer to hunt elk that are kind of over spread out over a big terrain, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, with as dry as the monsoon season has been, has your feed pretty much headed out and, and, and pretty much dried up and it's kind of got that yellow look to it, whereas on some years where we have big monsoons, it's still green. Um, you know, and it's got that green tint to it. Has everything pretty much yellowed out on you? No, it hasn't. I mean, some areas are really green, like you're saying. They're real lush like that. And other areas, just they just didn't get any rain, and now they're getting hit with rain. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see, you know, depending on our temperatures and everything, what will happen with those those areas. I mean, some, some places are still nice and lush. So, yeah. I mean, typically what we see happen is more towards the end of September, Around the time we get that first frost is when it really starts to yellow up. Tom, for the listeners out there that haven't heard you and I's podcast before, uh, give me a brief description of your operation over there at Black Mountain Outfitters, uh, the units that you guys focus on, and the animals that you focus on there. Um, we operate out of Units 12 and 13 in West Central New Mexico. Um, unit 12, we, I mean, we have over half a million acres of private ranches. We pretty much control a vast majority of the unit. Um, it's a very high-density elk area, and there's some really big bulls, and we've killed two state-record archery bulls out of that unit. Um, basically, when we get good feed and good horn growth, I mean, we have some of the biggest elk in the in the country in, in that unit. And then Unit 13, we do all public land hunting, um, primarily just all public land. We, we hunt some really big bulls there. We hunt archery season and muzzleloader season. It's a primitive weapon only unit. Um, we're simultaneously right now hunting both units. We have two lodges here in the area. So our main lodge is in Pie Town, New Mexico, and then our, our western lodge is on the Rincon Ranch, um, which is more towards the Arizona state line. But um, that's where we focus all of our all of our hunting. And, you know, we've got some incredible elk hunting here. We Every year we kill 
every year we kill multiple bulls, 350, 360 to 400 plus inches. I mean, it's just kind of a, a gimme. Um, you know, I, years, some years, we're kind of a high desert area, so we are very susceptible to, you know, down years of horn growth, depending on the, on the rain and the moisture. But on a year like this, there's, there's a lot of big bulls around just because we've had good feed. We had a strong winter. We had a good spring. And, um, you know, the only thing we're lacking right now is a monsoon season. Are most of your guides reporting and what you've witnessed out there, um, you know, fairly lethargic bugling, maybe a little bit first thing in the morning, but, you know, if any bugling, it's at night. You talked about being nocturnal. Um, talk a little bit about that and how you anticipate that changing over the next couple of weeks. Well, I mean, all the guides came in last night. It was our first hunt was a seven-day hunt. So yesterday was the first. Yesterday was the first, or excuse me, the last day of that hunt, and all of the clients had great hunts, so all the, at least all the clients that were still hunting, uh, they had great hunts. I mean, the bulls, when that moisture and that cool weather came in, I guess the bulls just lit up. Everyone reported hearing lots of bugling and lots of action. So, I mean, what we're going to see here in this next week is going to be, it's going to be good. I mean, everything's starting to kick on. Um, you know, it's, you know, being hot like that, it just, it was honestly it was so hot i think it was just hard for the animals to move around during the daytime you know um i mean it was just it was rough but now with this cool weather i have a feeling and last night i mean everybody heard a lot of a lot of bugling a lot of action so it's going to be good the next two weeks are going to be i think they're going to be just great you know awesome uh, talk a little bit about your antelope opportunities if you've already had some hunts or if you've got hunts uh scheduled here in the future um our antelope seasons are already over they were all in august we um you know we we killed some great bucks once again i mean we killed the biggest buck we killed was almost 91 inches which you know, most people don't i mean that it's a huge i mean we killed multiple boone and crockett antelope this year like we always do we've actually got two antelope operations we have our operation here in western new mexico and then we've got one in eastern New Mexico, north of Roswell. And the Roswell place has actually produced, I mean, just as good a bucks as the west side this year. Um, killed quite a few bucks that were, you know, 82 to 86, 87. Um, the biggest one we killed was 91. Um, we've got hundreds of thousands of acres to hunt, and we've got just some incredible antelope. I mean, people won't find better quality antelope than what we've got on our private ranches. And we manage them very very tightly i mean this year they went to a over-the-counter tag process you know for private land which i mean we didn't mind we managed just the same as we've always done um it was actually nice because it gave archery hunters a little more opportunity to hunt um because prior to the, to this year when it was an actual landowner tag system i mean it was difficult to even get tags i mean it was it was hard they were very restricted um you know this year what what we typically see, and um, people may think I'm crazy, but on years that we have good, you know, horn growth with elk, good antler growth, on those years our antelope usually aren't as big for some reason. Our antelope are typically bigger on the drier years. So I kind of felt like we were a little off this year. Um, we definitely didn't see the, the caliber of bucks on the west side that we normally see, but... And the east side produced some really big bucks, um, but it was really dry over there. So, you know, that's something that kind of goes against the grain, but, I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, any time that we I've have... I've heard that with antelope before. I've, I've heard a lot of guys say on dry years, antelope actually do better. I've never heard yeah. actually why or really dove into why, but I've heard that multiple, multiple from multiple people and multiple times. Yeah, and it just... It, I called it before the season even started. I said, our antelope on the west side probably aren't going to be as good just because we've had, we had such a good winter and spring, and we know we're going to have some big elk. So I said, these antelope, I don't think, I think they're going to be two to five inches off. And sure enough, they were. And then over north of Roswell, I mean, over there, it was dry as a bone. I mean, the conditions were very poor, and we killed some giant bucks over there. I mean, and they didn't even kill the biggest bucks they saw. So every year, it's just, it's like clockwork. It really depends on, you know, it's completely the opposite of, of the, of the elk for some reason. Tom, I know you're a busy guy. I've got, uh, if you could give 
three tips for guys that are going over to New Mexico, whether they be archery hunting, muzzleloader rifle, whatever it may be, um, three tips for guys out there for this year? Uh, my number one tip probably would be you know, concerning hunting water. I mean, when you've got a good a good water source that's getting hit, don't skip it. Don't hit or miss sitting it. I mean, you need to be consistent on that source. Those elk aren't going to hit that every day. I mean, they, they may hit it every third day, fourth day. Give yourself consistency in what you do. Give yourself the best chance you can of uh, being there at the right time. I mean, I see guys, they try to bounce around and they try to, you know, guess uh, what what animals are going to do instead of just sticking with a place where they have the highest odds of getting an animal. Um, be consistent about what you do as far as hunting water. You know, if you're going to, if you find a good water hole, you believe in that water hole, it's getting hit hard, sit it. I mean, sit it every evening or every morning, however you want to do it. But just be consistent in what you do. You'll increase your odds of actually harvesting an animal. Um, the second thing I could probably say is, you know, if you're in an area, especially a higher desert area that you can glass, I mean, get up and glass. I mean, don't rely on elk to bugle to, to be able to hunt them. I mean, you, you need to be able to get up high, locate animals. Um, that's that's one of the biggest things. I mean, we we did that actually earlier in the sun. I mean, it was quiet and um, it was it was tough conditions. So, I mean, what we were doing is getting up glassing and glass in the mornings and then we would find elk and we'd let them go to bed and then we'd get in close to them in the evenings and try to figure out where they're watering and try to hunt them on the water. You know, so that's what I would say. If you're in an area that you can glass, you need to get up high and glass if, if they're not bugling. Um, you know, the other, the third tip I would, I would probably give, which most guys, you know, I don't, I don't think most guys actually understand, but I mean, you know, when you're hunting archery elk, I mean, it's, the fact of the matter is don't plan on getting much sleep. Um, those animals are very active at night and early in the morning. You will increase your odds significantly if you can get up really early in the morning. Go to bed as early as possible, get up as early as possible, and get out there and actually locate bulls, you know, before, you know, before before hunting light. I mean, you need to be able to get out there and figure out where these bulls are at. They move. Elk are very, I mean, they, these elk animals move a lot, especially in our area. You know, they may not move as much in other areas, but, I mean, one night they'll be, you know, in one valley bugling and rutting, and then the next night they'll be three to five miles away. So, um, you know, get out early and do your, your, you know, do your basically your reconnaissance, you know, early in the morning. That way you can figure out where the bulls are at, where they're bugling, and you can take off on foot and get in front of them. Those are great tips. Uh, Tom, one last question. Uh, would it surprise you if you guys harvest a, a, a bull or two in the 400 class this year? What are your thoughts? Um, I, you know, we hope that we do. We, we probably will before it's over. I, I would say we'll definitely put one to two bulls on the ground that are that class. I mean, we definitely will kill some bulls 370 to 390. Um, there's been some really good bulls seen. There's, there's been a couple of giant bulls that should have already been killed. One that was probably 400. Um, I mean, it should have been killed. You know, it yeah. just didn't happen. I mean, it's archery season. It things happen. Yeah, um, they yeah. happen to the best archery hunters. That's just all there is to it. So, um, you know, we're optimistic. It's going to be a good year so far. Honestly, as tough as the hunting's been, the clients have had great hunts. I mean, I've had more compliments this year than I've ever had. I think, and and that's coming with tough conditions. So, you know, we. In our operation, we focus on just, you know, taking care of the clients and taking care of making sure all the controllable things are 100% and are A+. Plus. You know, we want food, attitude, you know, all those types of things. Those are all controllable, controllable situations, controllable, you know. Variables. Anything that's a control, yeah, anything that's controllable needs to be A+. Plus. It needs to be 100%. And by doing that, even when the conditions are tough, Clients have great hunts. That's just all there is to it, and um, so that's what we focus on. And, and honestly, we did we did really well for being hot and dry and tough conditions. I, I'm pretty pleased with our first week, and now you know we're get, having a new group of guys come in today, and it, things are getting really good. I mean, yesterday they were getting really good, so I'm excited for this next group. No doubt they're going to have great hunts. There's a lot of new bulls showing up every day now i mean bulls are just starting to pour in and show up and 
you know, all these big groups of cows we're seeing that had one or two bulls, now all of a sudden they're getting broke up. Um, it, it's it's looking like these last two weeks of archery are going to be really good. So we're pretty excited in our camp. That's fantastic. Uh, I want to give you a chance to let the listeners know where they can find you and read more about you. Also link it up uh, on the show notes of this podcast. Okay, you can visit our website at uh, bmohunts.com. Or you can also check us out on Instagram. It's uh, Black Mountain Outfitters underscore Inc. Uh, I mean, check us out on either one of those. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for spending some time with us, giving us a few pointers and uh, updating us on the conditions out there. I'll be watching Instagram, looking forward to uh, seeing the pics over the next couple of weeks. So God bless. Uh, keep everybody safe and uh, keep doing what you do, okay? All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right, buddy. Take care. All right, thank you.